The out of control problem of retail theft is already having drastic consequences for the city of San Francisco. As Henry mentioned there, many major retailers are scaling back hours at their stores in the city or worse, closing altogether. Let's discuss now the rampant shoplifting in San Francisco with Mitchell Marks, business professor there at San Francisco State. And Mitchell, we have seen a spike in incidents like the one that we saw there at Neiman Marcus. Are corporations prepared to deal with this kind of criminal activity? Well, yeah, they are prepared, Heather, but they have to temper their, prepar their preparations with the political climate. Here in San Francisco, there is almost an endorsement of the smash and grab. You know, the, 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 the average citizen feels like the, the government no longer has their back. You know, I, you, you just showed a, a clip of a, of a county supervisor, but it, it's almost as if the, the, the perps are, are, are the ones who are protected in this city. Okay, so what are businesses like a Neiman Marcus supposed to do to head off this problem, given the political climate, the political atmosphere there in San Francisco? Well, first of all, their, their, their comment that, that, that the safety of their, of their staff and their, and their customers is number one, is most important. For safety first, that's to, be, that's to be said. Something that Target is doing is closing, not closing stores, but li limiting the number of hours open. So more daytime hours when there's more traffic. Uh, so that's one thing they can do. But again, it gets to the political uh, climate. Uh, Target has been getting heat lately from progressives that they aren't doing enough for inner cities. Well, if they're going to open a store and then the store is going to lose money, that's not doing anyone any good. You know, right now, Target has a lot of stores they would like to close in inner cities because they're not making money. That's a reasonable business uh, uh, approach as far as I'm concerned. Mitchell, we have seen, though, you gave that example of Target reducing hours. We have seen, though, people be upset with Target for making this move. We've seen people get really upset with CVS and Walgreens for closing uh, stores that were repeatedly hit by, by shoplifters. So it almost appears as though it is a no-win situation for corporations. And Mitchell, when you are closing a store, when you are reducing hours, that means you're having less employees, less people employed in San Francisco. And I'll tell you, the real losers are, are Heather, in addition to those uh, potential uh, hirees, are the senior citizens who don't have a, a ability to travel cross town. Uh, it's, it's a lot of people who need to go to their local store. And, and unfortunately, it's, it's the people um, who, are, who are most senior in age and, uh, and have the fewer and also have fewer choices, law abiding citizens are suffering the consequences. So I understand it from the perspective of the store. I, I think they're, they're, the, the, the Neiman Marcuses and the Targets are very much uh, straddling a, a tightrope here uh, un, until the government elected officials join hand in hand with the business leaders and the community leaders, we're not gonna see any improvement. Yeah, we have seen the scale of thefts really making business for some untenable in San Francisco. Do you anticipate more closures or more businesses reducing their hours because of this surge in shoplifting? Yes, Heather, I definitely do because it's a simple business equation. If you have a store open and you're losing money and if, if, if customers are afraid to come in the store, uh, and, and, you know, one of the nice things about shopping is that it's leisure for some people. To, but if you're if you run in and run out because you're afraid of an incident, this is just very bad. And it just comes down. Look, I think businesses have a right to make money. Businesses, uh, that's why they're in business. And they also serve their communities. They do a lot of good other than making profits. But the point is, if, 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 if we're going to let these blatant attacks go without any repercussions for the perpetrators, what else can a store do than either shut down completely or reduce hours? I don't see any other alternative for them. All right, Mitchell Marks, an important conversation, and obviously this latest heist has gotten more of the attention of San Francisco supervisors. We'll see if anything happens. Thank you so much, Mitchell. Really appreciate your time this afternoon. Thank you for having me. Have a good day.